Hi, I'm Jim Wilson from The New Entrepreneurial Leader, and I'm talking with Jay Rao, a faculty member and contributor to the book. Jay, one of the points that we make across the book is that entrepreneurial leaders really do a good job of moving from creation logic to prediction logic, or go the other way, um, kind of reversing the sequence. How have you seen that play out, particularly in your work in research and innovation? My work is primarily with large companies, right. and through a, specifically through Babson Executive Education. And, and what I notice uh, in large companies, which is kind of very different from what small companies do, most entrepreneurs do, is that uh, large companies depend very heavily on the prediction logic. In the prediction logic, it's much more analysis before action. The classic MBA approach. Absolutely, absolutely. Whereas when you talk of most entrepreneurs or most innovators, they are much more dependent on the creation logic where it is action before analysis. Okay. Okay. And let me make a, a, give an example of how these two things work in reality. Uh, if you take the prediction logic, you do the analysis, you do the SWOT analysis, you do the Porter 5 analysis, you do the uh, pest analysis and step analysis, and then you predict the future. You predict the outcomes right. of what you think will materialize in the future. Using historical data that you have lying around or that you procured somewhere. Absolutely. Okay. It's very much dependent on looking, looking at the past. And then you also use internal metrics like internal rate of return or weighted cost of capital right. and say, in order for us to pursue this future or the project, it has to meet certain hurdles. And then we will go ahead and put invest money or put money into this, and we start moving towards the future. And of course, uh, the future doesn't materialize the way you want it, and you fail. At, it, at that stage, companies put a lot of effort and time and money to get back onto this predicted trend line, and again, it fails. And, and that's, at that stage, you know, you scuttle the project and uh, kind of you disperse the team and, and kind of really forget about the project. Whereas what, what entrepreneurs do, what the entrepreneurial mindset and the innovators do is very different. When they are dealing with unknown unknowns, they know that the future is somewhat different from the past. And they know that they don't have historical data to in fact make any kind of a prediction. But they observe what's going on in the environment and say, you know what, I think I need to go in this space but I'm not really sure where I'm going to find an opportunity. There are a lot of unknowns in this space, and the only way I'm going to learn these unknowns is by taking action. Okay? And so you think big, you set out in this direction, you start small, and you start several projects. Okay? And simultaneously see which of these are providing you some data or proof of concept about what you think the future may actually hold. So the notion there is, I start small, I start several, I get proof of concept by very quickly understanding voice of customer, voice of technology, voice of supply, voice of demand, and I prototype very rapidly, and I fail fast, I fail smart, and I fail cheap, and I learn quick. And I learn the variables, the unknowns in this environment. And I produce data. It's much more grounded in reality. Right. And that's what we discuss in the book. As the creation logic being grounded in reality as against the predicted hypo based on hypothesis. And again, when you fail fast, when you learn quick, you again go back and, and say, ah, this direction is not materializing. I changed the direction. And again, I do rapid prototyping, and I repeat the cycle. And I don't throw in resources till I find that proof of concept. And then at that stage, ah, when I find that proof of concept, then I put in a lot of resources to scale that project. Where you wind up might be a completely different spot than where you initially imagined with the creation approach. Absolutely. 90% of all innovations start out in a direction that they were not originally intended for. Are used for later on. Which is, uh, a, a, it's a different, certainly different approach than the prediction where everything is about hitting that goal, getting things back on track. Absolutely.
Okay. Very good. Well, thank you, Jay. You're welcome.